not normal, is it? When we hang pictures upside down, that's wrong, right? Well, I want to tell you about the kingdom that turned the world upside down. Now, what are you thinking now? The world upside down? Well, then again, something is not right, is there? So, we sometimes like to have fun. We like to walk upside down. Who of you can do that? Walk upside down. Walk on your hands and your legs up. Who can do that? I can stay like that, but I can't walk. You can't walk? No. Oh, my. Okay. Well, actually, God made us to walk like this, not upside down. So the, the kingdom that turned the world upside down. What, what do you think? Whose kingdom is that? Sanders. Who, who is the kingdom that turned the world upside down? The devil. The devil. Well, you got to think a little deeper. No. <clears throat> The Lord. the Lord. Yeah, the Lord, Jesus. So, I want you to think now, way back, what was the rule, the law? If two men or two people started fighting and one of them hit out a tooth, what was supposed to happen to the, to the person who knocked out a tooth? That person was supposed to be done the same thing. The Bible actually talks about that. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. In Matthew 5, verse 38, it says, You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That was the law. Do you sometimes do that? You don't break out teeth. You don't poke out eyes. But do you sometimes pay back? Who sometimes pays back? I want you to be honest, children. I think you all do. Yeah, someone does something to us. Someone takes a toy away. That's mine! And then you start screaming and fighting. Okay, that is a human tendency. We don't want to share. We want what is ours. Well, it continues to say in verse 39, But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall hit you on one cheek, you turn to him the other. Now, that doesn't mean literally just the cheek. That means a lifestyle. So, what would happen... If one of you were playing or doing something and someone comes and either takes it away or messes you up, what would happen if you then were to respond with, hey, you want this too? You want this other toy too? Then the fight would be over. But if you then go say, hey, that's mine. Give it back. Now, then you start a fight. And what really, this might sound funny, children, but really, when we act like that, we're upside down. That's not the way God planned it to be. God planned it that we should be standing on our feet. We should be right. But you know what? That's what the devil wants. The devil just wants to mess us all up. I want to tell you a little bit of story about the man who wrote this book, The Kingdom That Turned the World Upside Down. His name is David. They had moved, they had bought three acres of land, and they had moved into a country. They wanted more freedom, and they were excited about that. Well, the Lord allowed that this family was tested. And guess what? They passed the test. God helped this man. So they hired a company to build them a big fence. Now we would probably all just do it ourselves, right? But a nice fence. So they could have their goats in a safe place. Five feet tall. About that tall. A nice fence. 
While things went peaceful for a while until one night, one morning, early morning, there was a huge noise going on. The goats were screaming, a lot of noise, and they ran out and guess what they found? Bunch of dogs. They had noticed that there were coyotes there and stray dogs, and lo and behold, a bunch of dogs were in there, and one of their goats actually died, and one was hurt bad. Well, what to do next? What do we do with coyotes and stray dogs? Well, they went and found traps to trap them. Now, I know quite a few of you would just say, take the gun, but that doesn't always work. That's not always the right thing. I know we like it, but at least some of us. But they found some traps, and sure enough, next morning, same thing. Lots of noise. Goats were noisy, and lots of noise. And they came there, and off ran a bunch of dogs again, except one. The one couldn't run away. One of his legs was stuck in the trap. And this dog was shaking like a leaf. Really wanted to run away, but couldn't. And at that time, same time, neighbor comes uh, uh, driving fast on the yard, just a cloud of dust. He comes out and sees that dog, and and uh, this this David says, "Is that your dog?" Yes. And he made it very clear that we don't want neighbors like this. That that you know he had just hurt his dog his dog and David was tempted to to say well keep your dogs home and I'll keep my goats home but he didn't so the way he responded this neighbor who was mad now was shocked he had expected David to react and just talk back but David didn't and so David asked what do you suggest so they talked about it, and they actually made a peaceful agreement. They were just going to make put an uh, electric fence that would keep the dogs out. Well, David was really tempted to snap back. And often we are tempted the same way, to snap back. See, there's a verse in Proverbs 15, verse 1. Um, I have... We know that verse well. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. When we speak, if someone does something to us, for example, when you're driving along the road, how does your dad or your brother or your sister react if someone treats you wrong on the road? What do you hear? You don't have to tell me. <laughs> Just a little bit of a thought. What happens when we're being treated wrong? If someone crashed into you with a bicycle, or if someone maybe even deliberately tease you and you got hurt, what do you do? This worry. Can you control this pink thing here? Can you control your tongue? Yeah. Or do you yell at them? What happens if you yell at them normally? <laughs> Often that's what happens. Then a conflict starts. So a soft answer turns away wrath. So think of this. Let's not behave in an upside down way. Let's behave the way God intended for us to behave. To respect each other, to love each other. So that's your homework for this week, children. When you're being treated wrong, what should you do back? What does the Bible teach us? Who knows? Just say it. What does the Bible say? We do good to them. Is it easy? No. no, but practice makes good. So that's your homework for this week. Make sure you give soft answers. And that doesn't mean just to talk quietly. No, that's not what it means. No, it means that you don't speak harshly back. Okay?
You have a blessed week, children. Naturally, all loud enough. Hopefully, you will hear it today. <clears throat> well, praise the Lord. I am very blessed, very uh, encouraged, very happy to be here. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, share with you something that I experienced in my life. <clears throat> Often it's a lot of things with a lack of understanding in our life. A great, a great uh, struggle I went through in my life, through in my younger Christian life. I was in Bible schools, and was Bible schools, and I was never convicted. I was born again once, but the conviction that people were sharing that I wasn't—I I didn't felt those ones. The lack of understanding is it can just bring you in deep trouble if you don't have an understanding. For my Christian, uh, my way of lately I have seen that the, the, our greatest need is, is as a church, understand, acknowledge, and agree with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we cannot go forward and, uh, and, and deal in business if you have not agreements. You cannot go. We need an agreement, otherwise you cannot go. And this is same big in our life. But, and, but as long as you have not understanding, the matter of fact, even with healing, you juggle it out many times. You think, oh, how do I know? Is it God's will? Is it not God's will? It's because you don't understand what is God's will. That's why you don't you juggle it back and forth. If you have confidence what God's will is for your own life, then you can go forward in peace with God. Absolutely. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter six. That verse has never been old. I really, really enjoy that. That's one very short verse. Oftentimes, you probably missed it really when you read it. But it is once the truth. It's once the truth. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, it says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Now, you know, when uh, Jesus came to the, uh, uh, the mother of Jesus came to the Jesus and uh, his uh, brethren, he, he said to him, My brothers and my sisters are they that do the will of my father. <clears throat> I was, uh, <clears throat> I didn't uh, premeditate on my uh, message. I went through the Word of God as I was reading through the Word of God, and as I felt that the Lord put that scripture in the place there, I just wrote it down. I went to town, I bought this uh, the notepad that you can just stick in there and write your scripture on there. And for also for my sake, as for remembrance sake, I was uh, went through the Bible once, and then the second time I said I didn't wanna, always wondering, where was the scripture again? Where was the scripture again? I would mark it, and so that I know. And it has helped me greatly to just to remember even even just to know the Word of God, it is a great uh, help you to remember the Word of God. Where are you making yourself busy with? 
<clears throat> I had many uh, pictures that came to my mind this uh, week, thinking of when, <clears throat> when you are at Viseline, you are in an atmosphere that is healthy, right? Under a healthy environment, you, everybody is, doesn't swear, nobody speaks evil, everybody behaves themselves, they all they get along, you just have a healthy, uh, a juggling atmosphere there, right? Nobody goes, <clears throat> hates one another, you know? And you know what, I found this. Do you have a book like this in your home? And if you spend your time around this book, all, as much as you can, all day long, in the morning you get up early and you spend your time, you, you wrap yourself in the, up in this book. And you go through the day and you meditate and you wrap yourself up in the Word of God. And, and you are around an environment that is the most the best environment that you could ever have. That's the most wonderful environment. <clears throat> I was uh, I was just so and so I don't know I hope I can bring it out in such a way that you will you will ride on clouds too. Uh, verse uh, nineteen, chapter uh, six, verse nineteen, and Corinthians says, "What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is which is in you?" How many times we struggle whether we know the presence of God is with us? As you think about it, the presence of God is with you and with us. Everyone that has received the Holy Spirit, that is a joint spirit, the presence of God is with you all the time. He doesn't leave you. <clears throat> The other thought, thought to it is, can the Spirit of God be separated from the Father? No. Can the Spirit of God be separated from the Lord? No. So who lives in you? Christ. And the Father says, we will come and make our abode in you. Right? We will come and make yourself, you, them ourself home at you. That, that means the Trinity of God lives within you. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. And then Jesus says on the cross, you know, all power of the air and darkness, everything was crucified to the darkness in this world. Nothing was left. So, and Romans says that he, we were more than conquerors. We are more than victorious in this life. We can. It's because John Nefer said, you know how many times when we ask for God's for grace and strength, you know that moment when you felt that you didn't have grace and strength because your eyes were not on Him. Well, your eyes are on Him. You have always grace and strength. Always. You, have, you are never without grace and strength. The time that you are without grace and strength is because you have not your eyes on the Lord. That's when you are neglecting the Lord. That's where you have your focus somewhere else. Brethren, I, I would like to very much drive it, and you'd like Jesus says, I would plain you, talk, plainly talk to you, and so that that might settle in your heart. Is it only up to the elders to strengthen you, <clears throat> encourage you? If it is, I would tell you I would never want to be an elder. Never. Why? <clears throat> the load is that upon their heads. I stand before God. I would never want to stand with them and before God. Is it my responsibility to also? This is not where we built the church. The church is built at home. The church is built around us. We come here together and here we strengthen each other. Here we bless each other. Here we come with hearts that springing out the living water that springs out. Here we encourage and strengthen one another. And as we go in the week, we have the power and the world to speak. Nothing resists, we, we don't, nothing can resist the power of God. They can, they, Jesus said they can kill the body, but they can kill your spirit. 
<clears throat> I was uh, like uh, I wouldn't be alone in this uh, here today. I will randomly ask a, qu a question to somebody, and they have to stand up and describe their understanding to the Word of God. What they what they understand about that verse, because there is. This is like this, if I asked Johnny Wheeler, how are you being filled with the Holy Spirit? And he said, well, I listened to a message and such and such, and, and um, that preacher said, and so and so, and he, many years later, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Like, how, what does that know to me? What does that to me? I need your answer, how did you feel with the Holy Spirit? We need to have brethren that we can rely on each other. How do we rely on each other? We seek the kingdom of God and with all their hearts. Now, <clears throat> I will pick one. <clears throat> Isaac, well, how do you get a hunger and thirst after righteousness? Mike. <clears throat> You answer with the mic. That's right. <laughs> this is brothers and sisters. How I get a hunger and thirst after righteousness is uh, ask God. Ask God. Okay, so what does it take besides that? <clears throat> uh, surrendering my own will. <clears throat> and asking God, seeking Him, that's how I do it. And my experience is you have to be richly in the Word of God. You have to fill yourself richly with the Word of God. And while you are richly in the Word of God, you seek, you ask. When you are not in the Word, how can God, the Spirit of God, guide you into all truth? Is it possible? It is not possible. You are not mindful of Him. How can he guide you into all truth and help you to overcome through the day if you are not full of this? If you run to town with a, with a very little bit gas, you know that you're going to run out because, you know, you're just going to run out. It, 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 the vehicle does not drive for free. It needs gas. It needs to be filled up. It has a, it has a sucking tank. And our life, <clears throat> and this life, we, nobody else, it's not the elder's responsibility to fill you up through the week and to have, to come with a full tank to, to the meeting. It's not their responsibility. Do you know that? That is our own responsibility. We have to fill ourselves up. They have, they can encourage us and strengthen us. But to fill ourselves up with the word of God, that is our responsibility. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. <clears throat> Maybe I should read verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity, the spirit, and the bound of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all. Who is above all, and through all, and in you all. I've been so... <clears throat> we will cross those verses, and I tell you what, I, those verses are beautiful if you see them for what they are, for what they stand. How do, does your uh, light shine before the world? <clears throat> John Nelson. <laughs> Uh, by uh, doing the Father's will and um, ministering to them that, I guess, don't hear the gospel every day. Describe, the, describe to them what is the Father's will. Uh, spreading his word, uh, talking, communicating to not just people that you know and people that you don't know that you run into every day. That's the fruit of the Spirit, right? The fruit of the Spirit is, <clears throat> is the light of Christ. 
I've been, I, I don't know, I hope you get, you get a full heart when you leave here and hope you are seeking in the Word of God. And it's very, very, absolutely. When you fill yourself up with this and you go through the day, though you have no sleep through the night, you, you have fuel and fuel. I remember before I got, uh, I uh, surrendered my heart to the Lord uh, after Jerry was preaching about lukewarmness. <clears throat> I fill up every day in the morning a little bit. By the end of the day, I have all forgotten what I have read. And, and uh, the, you know, when you forget everything what you, re what you read, <clears throat> then the spirit of, of frustration and those type of things comes so easy into it. And you cannot control it because you cannot think back what you read. <clears throat> <clears throat> I want to really, really focus on the Word of God and especially the indwelling Spirit that we have received. We have received an indwelling Spirit. And when we go throughout our day, we are never alone. Never alone. We have, <clears throat> by agreeing with that spirit within our the spirit that dwells within us and the word of god you agree with the word of god you have to change if you want to take the face value of the scripture you will have to change your life if you think about the sacrifice of christ <clears throat> hit my i hit my a few weeks ago i hit my uh, finger with a hammer it's never it doesn't come back it seems like the tendons a damaged tendon in my finger but it hurts unbelievable. And if you think about the sacrifice of Christ, the nails that slid through the bones and they pry them open. And then the, when the post was dropped into the ground, out the weight of Christ hanging on those nails. Think about that, the sacrifice that he gave for you, so that you may be enriched and so that I may be enriched. So that we may have a peace and joy dwelling with him on this earth. That we have not to buy, uh, always track back, track back, track back. You know how many times I have I sitting here in this meeting, and when you have a, a, a cloud of darkness in front of your eyes, and you don't see and you don't hear the word of God, you peeling on yourself. Sunday after Sunday, you peeling on yourself. You have not heard the word of God. You go from here, you are discouraged, discouraged as ever before. You're peeling on yourself. You're looking back. You're looking back. Paul said, what is behind you, I cannot change. Therefore, I will look for it and run. I have sat there for so long. I wanted to use Canton, but I won't. But he probably isn't here. But uh, uh, <clears throat> think about it. If he would be someone sitting here, and he had his leg here, and has this, this uh, what do you call this, uh, Tweezers, you know, and look here, and all Sunday long, he was just peeling here. Would he get anything if that was the case? He was peeling on himself and peeling on himself, couldn't forgive himself. Sin that dwelleth within us, it's the darkness, the windshield that Isaac tell, the, the, if you get so dirty, you can't even see ahead of you. You've been picking on yourself. I think when you say it feels on these elves, right? Yeah. Right? So you're picking on yourself. Let's think the self pity, self that's a, a that's a greatest prison that you can be ever be in. Self pity. You oh I, I'm not as good as you. Oh, you know, just just pick me for what I am, you know. Self pity. I oh I cannot speak like Melvin can speak. Melvin heard this message all week long, but you know <laughs> <laughs> I heard this message. You know, we have uh, we picking on ourselves. We that's a false humility. False humility before Christ. <clears throat> one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's no one else beside that. We are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That we can separate them all not. So we are in unity with Him. We sit in heavenly places with Him. If we walk according to His command. 
If we fill ourselves according to his command, we walk in, in, in the truth. We can be walking. We can have, have a word in season and out of season. We can. Brethren, I have experienced that. We, when you fill yourself up, there is a well within you that goes through the day. You cannot lose a person without sharing the truth with them. <clears throat> but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So that means that we have all of uh, this whole group has a part. There's not one has everything completed. Therefore, I need Benny. Therefore, I need Isaac to perfect it, one another. So God is able, with, through his word, to make ourselves, make us blameless and spotless and undefiled, setting us before his father. He is able to. Do you believe that? <clears throat> Many times we are, we think that when we are down, everything is down. This, we, on my mind, the misunderstanding is that the, when we are in the valley of the clay, we are all together in there. We are not. The Spirit of God is never there. He is never there. He is always on top. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> besides this uh, first, second Peter uh, chapter 1 verse 5 says and I read till um, chapter uh, verse 10 and besides this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity and if, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Wherefore, read the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and the election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. <clears throat> I have experienced this, that we must really give ourselves diligently. When we, even though our feelings are far from the will to do so, very far for even want to get up in the morning. Ha! Huh? <clears throat> The spirit of laziness, the spirit of the sleepiness, the spirit of depression, the spirit of discourage can so easily creep in our minds and we cannot get up. In the name of what we have received, the power of, of grace that we have received, the, the Holy Spirit, by that spirit you can drive that, the, the laziness, the, the, the mind of laziness. Just think about the thinking on your mind throughout your day. If you don't think, who thinks for you? The devil. If you think, the, he has no room for you. <clears throat> We, we are not bound by, between many different places. We are not, it's not like the kingdom of God has many different rooms. Oh, okay, this man doesn't think really exactly this. He can be in that room, he can be in that room. We are all in one. Either we think the truth or we are... We have to give diligence, brethren. We cannot come here empty think. I cannot afford it anymore because my duty, my responsibility is to help one another, to care for one another, that you may be enriched by the Holy Ghost, that I may be enriched by you. Paul says that to many different letters where he wrote, he said that I may come and enrich you and that I may be enriched by the truth. 
If you are not in the Word, you cannot, the Spirit cannot guide you into all truth. He cannot protect you. So many times, you know what? We have um, that uh, verses where it says, ask what you will and you shall receive it. I think that is a, uh, that's a very wrong how we often use that. Many times we we are driving and we're driving like John Ant, uh, John Newport was sharing, you know, as well as everything, the older one, he says the older one, we can just give him this and this and this and he would get healed. You know what? It's, it, that's, we sh that's a very great example how you just give there. We think, and this one, we can give him this and give him this. We don't have to cry out to God. Now this young born baby, now we have to cry out to God. You know what? There is no difference. There's no difference. We try to drive as long on our own wheel as we can. Once you have a flat tire, we cry out to the Lord. <clears throat> God is our spare tire. Isn't that true? <clears throat> first Peter 2, verse, uh, <clears throat> chapter 2, verse uh, 1 to 5. <clears throat> Wherefore, lying aside all malice and guiles and hypocrisy, and envy and, and all evil speaking, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk for the word that ye may grow thereby, if so be that, so be ye have taste, that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming us as unto a living stone, the soul and deed of man, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up, a spiritual host, as holy priesthood offered up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Brethren, and what does a young born baby rely on? <clears throat> Isaac Croker. Oh, sorry, Isaac. Uh... Miller. A newborn baby depends on milk. Milk. What else? Sleep. There's lots more to it. <laughs> Plenty. A newborn baby is rely as an empty page completely. It can't change his diaper. It can't change his dresses. It cannot change. It, it, it cannot grab for milk if it is if it is somewhere alone in a, in a room. It cannot do it. It cries until it has it. Completely, completely dependent. Completely dependent. Are we completely dependent on the Lord? Do you know that phrase, or that uh, scripture where Jesus says that he pulled up the little child and he said, if you are not like them, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. Brethren, we need to be have a dependent on the Lord. The dependent on the Lord is we come with every and through every hour, through every time. We come to the Lord with all our needs. When I often thought about it, I, I don't know, it, it's not the time right now. I wouldn't have time for it to bring into it that uh, the, uh, the disciples and their state where they were, they were poor, they were have nothing. Peter said, at silver and gold have I none, but such things as I have, I will give, right? So they had nothing else. So they had the, there was one thing they had to depend on the Lord, on food, on, on the word of uh, the receiving the Holy Spirit, uh, and get, or everything. Their families and everything was rely on them. On the Lord, the, Peter was now a missionary. Uh, I don't know who, how much children and and wife, whether they went to work. I don't know, but they were dependent on the Lord. And we have an all an abundance of our life. We have everything that we need. How many of you have suffered the last week one meal they couldn't eat? You have to cry out for the Lord for food. I know not one. How many of you went uh, had uh, had no coat? You it was freezing outside in the cold. None. You didn't have a need to cry out to the Lord. <clears throat> Neither me. We had nothing to depend on. We went and we went through the days and life and pleasure and fun and and everything was good. And all of a sudden, a child would say, "Oh." Father, I can't heal this one. 
Spare tire. <clears throat> I think many times, brethren, that we're, we are not tested because we will be a, we are ashamed to be tested. Do you believe that? Let's say I told Melvin, I said, if I all of a sudden say, Melvin, get up and walk, and he got up and stumbled, I, oh, man, I would be embarrassed in front of all the people. Wouldn't you be? <clears throat> we cannot be, be protected from the um, um, mouth of the lions if we are not stirring up lions. <clears throat> Hebrews uh, 12, verse 12, uh, Hebrews 12, verse, from 1 to uh, 4. <clears throat> strengthening, strengthening of your uh, of faith in, in Jesus. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down in the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against him, himself, Let us, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind, be ye, ye have not re, yet resist unto blood, striving against sin. We have not, and I not, myself either, we have not resist unto the blood, unto blood to resist sin. <clears throat> It is very much easier if you can consider, the, the behold the Lamb of God, behold, the many times, and Jesus says, behold, 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 you know, when you, this is what I wanted to bring in, put in your mind very strongly, when you have the indwelling spirit within you, you have always, everywhere where you are, you have the fullness of power to cry out to the grace, the throne of grace, you have. You believe it, you can, if you behold the Lamb of God, and you can, you can look in your mind, you can talk to a person, and in your mind, you behold the Lamb of God that sitteth on the throne. That you have, you are, have a spirit that connected with that spirit. You can call to Him, you can cry yourself out to Him. Think about it. I thought often, I thought about it when I was reading here. I tried not to premeditate on the on the message at all. I I said, Lord, there's a verse that we will come across. He says that open, uh, like, do not premeditate before when you stand before man and speaking, but ask the Lord and He will give you what you need to speak. <clears throat> When he says, despise the shame on the cross, he was naked. An old man saw him on the cross, despising him. He had nothing to cover himself. His hand was nailed to the cross. His feet, think about the pain that he went through for you so that you be enriched with the eternal life. Can we, can we give ourselves and con consider his suffering? Can we sacrifice our life for him? Is, th is, that, can, is that too much to sacrifice, be filled with the Holy Spirit? Is it too much to be, uh, become to the meeting with a well of, of living water? Is it too much for us? <laughs> Wherefore, seeing we also are compassable with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I read yesterday evening a book, 
And it was having an appointment with heaven. And I read a story, and it was so rough. I uh, threw that book after I threw it in the garbage. I realized that clinging to the Word of God was the best book, actually, after all. I realized that this have, has all the answers for, for heaven. I don't need, there's another man described his point of view of heaven, but this is have everything that you could ever wish for. And he, and the, no man can even describe Revelation at the back. What will it be when we will sit with him in heaven? What will it be? We had glimpses we can, can uh, imagine ourselves. And Colossians chapter uh, 3 verse 1, he says, uh, verse, uh, sorry, chapter 3 verse, um, I just read it, sorry. <clears throat> I didn't mark every single verse because I thought I would have already have way too many. Here it wouldn't come through anyway. But Colossians chapter uh, three, verse um, one to uh, three or four: If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things on the earth, for ye are dead. For your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear with, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. <clears throat> How easy it is to set your affection on the things on earth that you can you can have absolutely no desire even for the word of God. It just you are you're you're running with this world. You are running with the uh, things of this world, and your affection is for being getting more. It's a. I would like to share a little bit from my past as far as uh, my dad's uh, situation. I was called the lazy boy, the lazy boy that would never to come to anything, and therefore I bought a piece of land, and then I bought another piece of land, and I was considering to buy another piece of land just when I ever had to stand before my dad. I had a backup. If that said, would ask me, well, what do you have? Well, I have a piece of land. I have here a piece of land. And there a couple of pieces of land. I have a backup. Look, I did come to something. But as I was reading through the scripture, I realized that, you know what? That I'm uh, serving another master. I'm not serving him. And then just like a, few, a day later, somebody called me, you want to sell this piece of land? I said, yep. <coughs> no second doubt. I said, yep, buy it. Sooner or later, I don't want that piece of land. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you put your affection on the things on the things above, you know, the whole earth, if you look at as you think about it, the whole earth is cursed. It's under under a curse of sin, the nature of sin. I was thinking this uh, when the last week I was laying in bed and was thinking about the the, the connection that I have to the cr throne of grace. And I was like, we're laying there, and my mind is trying to just, I couldn't even sleep. I was so sleepy before I went to bed, but I was thinking about it. Man, I have a connection free through the air and to the throne of grace. I have a connection, and my spirit that dwells in me is the same spirit that dwells in Christ. That night, I had a dream, and I that dream I was like, I set my affection on the things that was above, and, and I saw crops that you never see on this earth. But they are common crops. Soybeans and corn. And, this, and where the Spirit of God is, and there is liberty, the crops do marvelous. They look beautiful. There is not a long branch with two pods on there. There is pod from pod and pod. It is that how it looks, and 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 the and the other round. With the spirit of God, with there is liberty. There even the crops can do good. <clears throat> can you believe that when when you have now the indwelling spirit that liveth within you, can you do well? Can I do well? Can your children uh, juggling around you throughout the week and feel like everybody feels us happy? 
Because you fill yourself up with the Word of God. My wife said this morning, man, even the children are just so happy, just so happy around you. And that is because what? We are, we are filling ourselves up with what? We become dead. And the Spirit becomes alive within us. <clears throat> the whole, the armor of God, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter six, ten to eighteen. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and and in the power of His might. And in the power of His might. I ponder upon that. And the power of His might. <clears throat> Be strong in the power of His might. Because we often, when we are not strong, and we are, we feel like we are weak as the, the twine that is flicking in the air, it's because we don't look to the Lord. <clears throat> Put the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wildest of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual uh, principalities and power, against the rulers of darkness of the, this world, against spiritual wickedness and this and high places. Wherefore, thick unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shoes with the pre preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. As take the helmet of salvation and the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This is the word of God. Brethren, we have, this is, Jesus says in John's gospel, he says, this, this is the words of the Spirit. And we have that same spirit dwell within us. We, you fill yourself richly up with this word. And if you come across the areas where you are in darkness, your spirit will have to agree with that spirit. And therefore you will be changed. You will. There is no second as unless you are the one that heareth the word and does not do it. They, that your foundation will be destroyed. All this above is because the word of the Spirit. If you fill yourself up with the word of, of the Spirit. Everything that he is about, you cannot do if you have not filled yourself up with the Spirit. You are not able to stand. And neither am I. For I have experienced that I cannot stand against the loss of the flesh and the loss of this world. You, I don't know if you ever feel like it. I have felt that many times, like we're in the in Genesis or in the Exodus, the early uh, New Old Testament, where the angels of God stood and they covered their faces because the abomination was so great. They could not look at it. And for the sin that I often fall into it in my life, I felt like the angels of God stood like this before me. They will hold their face. Because the abomination is so great. Brethren, we have the power of light. The power of the light of Christ is dwell within us. For Jesus says the kingdom of God is not an observation. If you say one, say, Lord, the kingdom of God is here. Lord, the kingdom of God is here. He says, no, the kingdom of God is within you. And then if the kingdom of God lives within us, can we overcome the, the darkness of this world? We must. Oh, 
Romans 6, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 6 to 14. <clears throat> Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him in the body sin, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. <clears throat> if you think about it, if you really are crucified with Christ, really, are you crucified throughout the week? Am I crucified? If I'm crucified, am I a sacrifice? Am I, am I able to sacrifice? Do I have the power of God dwell within me then if I'm sacrificed? Yes. Can God, is, is, is the Spirit of God able to destroy the body of sin that is so easily that we are clenched to it? Or cleaving to it, I don't know often my words, even, but, you know, i come to recognize myself, who God made me. He made me who I am. And I, my wife is my wife. You cannot change me. Unless you cut my tongue out. For he that is dead and free from sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. Has death dominion over you, fear? No, if you are in Christ, he has no dominion over your brethren. Young and old, everyone that have received the Holy Spirit. I often all of a sudden see brethren. Many times I, I struggle whether we, uh, whether I have received the Holy Spirit. And as, as I, I was seeking the Lord one morning and walking across the the, uh, the the farm across the yard and there's like an honorable voice came to me he said that was good fellowship and in my heart it leaped I often often thought this is another thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit often you know brethren we and, and I was a Mennonite and therefore we were ignorant and Paul you know uh, Peter he was an ignorant Peter and John was also an ignorant person Acts chapter 4 he says there that the people the Pharisees and they had they they marvel at these two disciples because uh, for what they all knew, for they were unlearned and ignorant men. Just and when I read that verse, I said, "God, thank you. I am an unlearned man too, and I want to rely on you to be educated by the Holy Spirit, not of my own education." Many of us, we are many of us, were educated in this world, but we have. A need as a little child, rely on the Lord Jesus so that we have be educated by the Lord. So when you go and throughout the week, that you can say, I am not educated because what I know, but that I am educated what the Spirit revealed to me. That what I know I will speak of. <clears throat> Likewise, reckon ye also yourself be dead and deed unto sin, but alive to unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Is that possible? Reckon ye yourself to be dead and deed unto sin. I have uh, so many times I struggle with whether they sin they were dwelling within me or where does this all come from? And you know that, that often been used it is in your mind and 18 inches from the heart. And I, for years, I struggled with that. I was sitting in meetings, and I was never convicted because they said they felt them here, and they said they were convicted. Like I felt like, man, there's something wrong with my heart. Shall I pluck it out and see what's wrong with you? Like I was not convicted. And to know that we have, when we were born, we receive a soul, an eternal spirit that never died. You know, and as we come to recognize sin in our life, the good and evil, sin revive in our hearts, and we live in sin. 
And as we live in sin, and all of a sudden we have to agree with the Holy Spirit that we need uh, a new indwelling spirit for us to be entered into the kingdom of God. So the whole, Jesus gave us a new spirit, which is the indwelling spirit, and cleanse and wash us from sin. So now Christ dwelleth in that spot, where we let sin dwell in. And so oftentimes when we let the thoughts and the imaginations coming in, they come right to that heart where Christ dwelling. And that is what darkens your eyes. <clears throat> let not sin therefore ring in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments in, of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of, in, of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. We are not under the law of this world anymore. And we therefore we cannot uh, let sin dwell in our heart, in our minds, in our em uh, emotions, in our feelings. <clears throat> Acts chapter four, verse four. Uh, Acts chapter four, verse thirteen. I, I really, really uh, was blessed when I heard that, uh, when I read that verse and think about it. I was ignorant, but yet I receive a true, genuine spirit within me. <clears throat> now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them, and that they had been with Jesus. Have you been with Jesus? Have you, go you through your week? Do you fill yourself up with Him? Then the light what is within you will shine. What will come out? Frustration? Bitterness? Angry? All those things? No. Opposite. Love, patient, long-suffering. Galatians chapter um, 5 verse 22, I think that's where it is. <clears throat> the fruit of the Spirit will come out by our walk with God. When we fill ourselves with this Word, with the Holy Spirit, can we be filled with the Holy Spirit if you are making your... Everything, if you have nothing else that you are more desiring than the Word of God, can you be filled through the Word of the Spirit? If so, then seek it. But, he, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Those are the fruits that will come through your life. <clears throat> I have, I, I truly, I look back the last couple of months, I have, I grow in patience because I can see the, there are times that I, the, the, the spirit stir up so quickly in my, in my mind. Wrath. The more I fill myself up with the word of God and go through my day, and at the end of the day, that I can look back and say, you know, truly, truly, that is a great joy to know that you did not stumble about this, about that, all the evil uh, thought, imaginations. When that happened, what happened when you have a thought, an evil thought jumped into your mind, and you soon start to, if you start to feed that, and start becoming imagination. Imagination is very hard to get rid of it if you have that. That's the next step from being sin that is born. I have looked in the, my past so many times, and I could see exactly what happened. The thought went into my mind, and then I start feeding it, 
And as I was feeding it, it became an imagination. And in the imagination, there are your feelings and emotion and everything is involved there. You cannot just ease it back out there. And before you know, the sin is born. And all so many times I have realized that that we are we are uh, mourning and weeping because the sin is born, but that is not the reality. That's not the, the, the first thing that happened. It is not the sin that is that is the fruit of it. That's just the reality that comes through the thought. But were you obey disobeying the spirit when the thought came into your mind? Pray, and you did not. That is where you disobey the Spirit of God. It is not the, the actual sin that you will be able, to, once, once it was fulfilled, that you disobey. <clears throat> John chapter 7, verse 37, 38. <clears throat> and the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood in Christ, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth in me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of spring water. I don't know how many times you have found yourself, and that when you, I myself, I often might find myself like that. When I start sharing the gospel with somebody, and I share it a little bit, and as soon as I run dry, because they've done all this, a person is that wants more questions, has more questions, and more desire to know, then you don't have it. How come? It's because you're wrong, empty. If you're serving throughout the week, and that, that dries you out, and you come here dry, that service is wrong. For we have the, the recommendment of God that we ought to fill ourselves up with the word of God. And so that we come together and encourage one another and exhort one another and strengthen one another. That is our responsibility when we come together. That is what we're doing. We strengthen one another. We encourage one another. We bless one another. We give them uh, the food that they didn't know. How many times of, of, of your uh, Mennonites, or my parents did that, that they would chew the bread or whatever, the mothers would chew the food, and then they give it over to their child. My mom did that. I have seen, I don't know if she did it on me, but I know <laughs> that often happened, that, that Kafka, they would give it over to you, right? For what reason? So that you become from the earlier life that you can become stronger and grow. And so our mothers broke the bread and chew it and chew it so that we didn't have to break it all up with our digestive system. And so the Lord Jesus, as only what you are, He desires of you, asking of Him and desiring of Him, and He will chew it for you. And He break it down for you, so that you can understand. <clears throat> John chapter 17 verse 20 <clears throat> Neither pray I for the, these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one as though thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And, the, and thy glory which thou givest me, I give them, and they, that they may be one, even as we are one. And in them, thou and thou and me, I and them, and thou and me, that they may be made perfect and one, 
and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Righteous, O oh righteous Father, the world hated Hate had not known thee, but I know thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, and thy love, wherewith thou hast loved me, may be in them, and I in them. I was, uh, I was, I was thinking about that. I realized that every single day, through my day, that we need to have a revival with, with the Lord every single day. When you get up from your morning prayer, that you have a feel that is uh, that is the message for you that day. <clears throat> That we be made one. How can we be one if we have when we, if we have received one spirit, young and old, or sitting or middle class, all have received one spirit? What is that spirit does within us? What does it do within us? It drives us that we will feed one another. It will drive us that we will strengthen one another. It will bring us, uh, it will give us courage with one another. For, I, uh, so, um, when I thought about the Trinity of God, dwell it within man. The church is not built here. Where we are separate, Christ his presence is there. And the Father's presence is there. And the Holy Spirit is there. <clears throat> Are we able to proclaim that one that lives within us wherever we are? Are we able? I believe very so that we are able, and I testify with it. And brethren, I, I would encourage you with this. Testifying of that what you know is what strengthens your faith. It is not just coming here and be fed. It is, and or just heard. For that will be, it's come to the point that we hear and we miss the word. Because we become more more less of uh, um, actable in our faith. For when you testify what you know, that is what strengthens your inner man. You've been tested so many. I have been tested so many times, and through testifying of who the Lord is, we had a, a, a this uh, one of the Indian bo uh, young man that was. Um, driving truck for us, and I asked him the other day, and I, I talked to him about the gospel, and he said he serves a God that never died. I said to him yesterday, I said, if you serve a God that has never died, then you serve not the right God. My, uh, our, my, our father, uh, the Lord Jesus, he died for our sins, so that we, through him, may enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God and serving a God that has never died. We, we serve a God that sacrificed himself. And through that sacrifice, we do enter into the kingdom of God, who that runs the, the race with patience. <clears throat> <clears throat> I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one. Can we be made perfect brethren, sisters? I thought about it this morning. I have no other brothers and sisters than you. I have none. When I took that example of Jesus, but he said that my mother and my brethren and my sisters are they that do the will of God. I realized that what should I fear for you, Corny, Daniel? For speaking of the truth of God here in front of you. You are my brother. You are my sister. Should I become afraid of you? 
Don't you and your, and your family at home, you're glad to share everything that you have to say? Shouldn't that be in us? Shouldn't that be in us? That we have gladly, with joy, we say everything we, what we learn of who, what the Lord has done for us. I have no other brothers and sisters. I realize that, you know, I have no fear for you. Don't nervous this time throughout the week tried to bottle me down. I said, you know what? What should I be nervous of? <clears throat> Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Just think about that. And Ephesians uh, talk that we have received uh, everyone that walketh with Christ and already dwell with Him in heavenly places by faith. We are we. It's uh, we. We cannot see the way Christ did it. You know, Nathaniel was, was sitting under the fig tree, and Jesus was. I don't know how far my, many miles away he was from that fig tree, and his spirit and his mind was connected to the Father of Heaven and the Holy Spirit, and they he could look down over there and see uh, Nathaniel on the, the fig tree and he was here. We cannot look that we don't have yet that uh, ability that we can look in heavenly places around and say that yeah that's Peter. You know, we are not yet there, but by faith we already dwell there. And by faith, that, that, that Trinity already lives within us. <clears throat> John chapter 14, verse uh, 15 and 23. <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, I don't know with him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. <clears throat> we have not the we have not the eyesight yet in that particular way, but we can know by the thoughts what can come into our mind, whether that are they are of the truth or of the devil. But Jesus had already beforehand he could see the line between what lays there, the wickedness and the righteousness, and therefore there was no there was no such thing that. The, all the temptation that he, they came to him, that tempted him, he could see exactly what was it beforehand already. Think about how, how the author that must have feel that the Pharisees had this evil thought in their mind. Pop up. Blasphemer. And Jesus expelled himself in front of the crowd. He said, why do you thought evil thought? Why do you say that I'm a blasphemer? Well, they didn't say that, but they thought that. And Jesus had the ability to do so. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me, because I live, and ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in, the fa in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode within. He will come and make himself home of us. We're not alone. We're not going through this 
massive struggles and battles and storms and that we look at to see the, how the world direction is going, you know? If you focus on that too much, yes, you become fearful of what's going on. But if you make yourself mindful of the Word of God, like grab it. You know how it is sometimes when you have a good fruit, you bite it. And think of this. The Father said he will. He and the Son will come and abode with him. With him. Him. <clears throat> John chapter 12, verse 35 and 36. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For the true, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goes. How many of you have experienced when you go through a hard time throughout the day, throughout the week, and your focus is not on the Lord? Darkness covers you before you. You cannot even, you don't even, you're confused with yourself. We cannot see ahead in our life. <clears throat> the light of Christ. There is another verse that I would like to uh, share with you. It's a very, very beautiful verse. Uh, it is that the, the, the eye, if the eye is single and has is it light, right? And it, if it's the eye of the, the heart of Christ and is living in you and that's single and that's full of light and the body is full of light, what if the body is full of light? What can be secretly stand between you and God? That is a transparency. You have between your brothers and sisters, there is no darkness at all. You cannot have darkness, and within the assembly where you won't be called one, you cannot have any darkness at all in that circle. You have to be such transparency. There is no darkness within you. No darkness. What, what, nothing that your brother does not know about you. You must confess that. That will hinder the, 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 the one unity of Trinity will hinder it. Do you believe that? I strongly believe that. For in the Trinity of God, for the Spirit, the Father, the Son, they can never be separated. They always agree in one another. They have never disagreement. And if you do something with somebody else disagrees on, there's a disagreement already. Might be not bad. Sometimes we say, oh, well, it's not bad. But if that hinders you from being have peace with your brother, it is bad. If that hinders you, whether that is um, even the, 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 the example that Jesus, uh, Jesus gives, that the parable of those that have received the word and the, and the riches of this world choke the word. And if, if the riches of this world choke the word within me, is it bad? Is it called evil? Is it called from the devil? <clears throat> we often will confess that we do not serve two masters. I will confess that to you, that we do serve often two masters. We will often confess that we don't. We do. We, how many of you are businessmen and they are well equipped in business days? Have you equipped yourself with the Word of God when you come to the meetings? Are you equipped? What's true on your most on your mind? What do you serve most?
Luke 17, verse 20 and 21. <clears throat> when he was the man of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, and he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not in observation. Neither shall they say, Oh, here, is, here or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. <clears throat> That gives me great joy, brethren, that we, we, where we are, we don't have to wander around and wondering, how do I know what is the will of God in my life? Even if, as you think about what I shared before, the fruit of the Spirit, they come out, the light of the body. The light is, when your body is full of light, then the fruit of the Spirit is revealed the most. Isn't that true? Then patient is much more active, and love is much more active. With affectionate love for one another, forgiving one another. So many times we, you know, we wonder, what is the will of God? And this, <clears throat> or that, what is the will of God for my daily life? Well, we know that the, the Word of God is for in our daily life to walk in love and patience and long-suffering and forgiving one another. With patience, endure one another. <clears throat> I'll try to one more, one more verse. <clears throat> the lamp of the body. When you think about it, oh, I hope you, uh, you enjoy this verse. <clears throat> no man, when he had lighted a candle, we, Isaac had this last uh, Sunday, no man, when he had lighted a candle, put it, it under in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but a candlestick, that they might, which come, in my sea, the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when that eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. Now, I look at this verse up in, in, the, in, the, in Google. See, what would it look like if the full body would be full of light? That's from the top to the bottom. It's a transparency. There is no darkness in you. It shines from the outside, inside out. What is from the inside that you can see from the outside? Wouldn't that be, uh, I don't know if that would be good to, for us to see that, but, you know, our physically eyes, but, you know, uh, uh, we could connect if our bodies would shine so full of light in the, the love that we would have for one another and the patience that we would have for one another and the forgiveness and kindness and looking out for one another and that our neighbor's wealth and his care. You know, like Jesus that he came and he was sucked out for us. He was drained out to the last minute. They, would, they spared him on, they wanted to give him just vinegar to drink. <clears throat> he was, he became poor for us. Do we, are we willing to come, become poor for our neighbor? Are willing to come poor? Isaac Ball is a very great example. Uh, you know, when, when he, uh, hires, he accepts the poor and then calls, you know, and buys the, pays for the ticket and everything. <laughs> <clears throat> Am I willing to come poor for someone else? <clears throat> but when thine eye is evil, the whole the body also is full of darkness. When our eyes are evil, then our body is also full of darkness. I look at that up too. Man, that looks disgusting. That looks absolutely disgusting. The darkness that can be dwelt in man. Well, we know that's our only pictures, nothing to compare what Christ he is.
The world gives us a, a small picture. What will be transparency and what will be darkness? But no sin, no darkness, nothing will enter into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Is it possible that light that we had, can it be darkened? It is. So what must we do then? We must run with all our might, with all our strength, with all our, uh, with all our soul that we run after the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness first. And He said the other thing He will add it unto you. But I tell you one thing, many times we are running for the other thing first and then we're hoping somehow we're going to get filled with the Word of God. It's not going to work. <clears throat> We run in business very well. Are we equipped with the armor of Christ? With the whole armor of Christ? Are you equipped for this week with the full armor of God, the armor of salvation, the power of, of God? Are you equipped with that? <clears throat> we have every tool that we basically need, not myself, but I think many of you guys have. But <laughs> I need often more tools, but I have to deny myself. I can't afford it. I can't buy them. <clears throat> anyway, the Lord be with you. And remember, you have an indwelling spirit. Remember, behold the Lamb of God through your week. Re remember, if you can behold, just remember, behold the Lamb of God. And then you will, like John Newport said, you know, when we... Um, all of a sudden, the newborn baby, we have no, we can't, we, we, in our mind, we can't have not, we don't know how to do it. But the, the other one, we do with all our might. We give all ours in it, and then if it doesn't work out, then we will cry out to God, like, you know what, why didn't you do it just right away? <clears throat> but let's keep our eyes on the Lord, beholding Him. For we, I know for sure, if you will fill yourself up with the Word of God. I myself, you know, I have started to read. I have, my goal is to read many times through this New Testament. And as I read it, the second path going through, I realized that many verses that I would never have remembered, they are just sticking in me. And the more you do it, you will be more and more be equipped with the Word of God. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> yes, thank you for that. I think we would all say that we were challenged this morning. I know I was challenged. I was thinking back to uh, what Henry Clausen shared uh, a couple of weeks ago at least. Also just being in the Word. Uh, seems to be a theme that God's been uh, showing us, at least in me, that unless we get serious with getting into the Word of God, we're going to miss something. Just, yeah, think about all the exhortations we've had. I know that's what it's been for me. He's really been showing me, you're not in the Word enough. You need to be getting the Word more. And so I want to take that to heart. So, yes, with that, maybe we could all rise and then uh, just pray before we leave here. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this uh, morning, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that you've not left us to ourselves, Lord. We thank you that you continue to...